Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we're exploring the wonderful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England. We've decided to revisit the centre of the region and find some hidden gems, places that are not quite so famous, but still just as beautiful. This is Gizmo and this is Widget. And you'll find them and me and Ross today in a little hamlet called Sevenhampton. We're really close to Brockhampton where we were last week, but this is another fabulous little hamlet. We're gonna show you around and we're going to show you this extraordinary little church, which probably can claim to be the smallest of all the Cotswold wool churches. Come with me. The people of Brockhampton, the village we visited just west of here, would walk the mile or two to church in the village of Sevenhampton, pronounced locally Sennington, I understand, where we are now. The Church of St Andrew was formerly a chapelry of Prestbury, and Norman in origin, but it was very much altered and enriched under the will of John Camber, who died around 1497. Camber was a merchantman from Worcester, who almost certainly had a wool business in the Cotswolds and is buried in this church. He was responsible for the central tower, the south porch, as well as the remodelling of the 13th century transepts. It's the central tower inserted with Camber's money and under his instruction, that gives this church its unique and charming character. The width of its east arch more or less coincides with that of the narrow chancel, which make the similar west arch and the four centred north and south arches narrower than the nave and transepts, so the whole required a complicated array of buttresses to hold it all up. There's a wonderful vaulted ceiling at the cross, lit by natural light from the high windows above, and the belfry is housed above it. There are two fonts, one probably 17th century, shaped like a chalice, and the more recent and more often used, decorated with large angels, dated 1892. There is a small brass inset in the wall of the church's benefactor, John Camber, a small monument in a small church to a generous man who clearly fell for this part of the world and the people in it. This little church can certainly claim the title of a Cotswold wool church, having largely been paid for out of the proceeds of a local wool business, but it has none of the pomp and grandiosity that you find in the more famous wool churches of, for instance, North Leach or Burford. It is small, compact and beautifully formed, a classic Cotswold gem. Overlooking the church from the east is the old vicarage. This is a Victorian building built in Tudor Gothic style and it adds to the grave atmosphere around the church. The ridge above Sennington forms the watershed of this part of the Cotswold. Evans writes, hard by is a spring of beautifully clear water collected into a circular basin large enough for a bath, whence it flows northwards to the River Severn. At no great distance is another spring, which finds its way southwards to the Thames. We haven't found the springs yet, but we're planning to examine the amazing network of waterways, both natural and man-made, rivers, streams, canals, fountains, fish ponds, etc for a later programme, so we'll find them in the end, perhaps with your help. The river that starts here and flows south towards the North Sea is the River Colne, which we've come across many times over the years, providing us with fabulously beautiful walks near Hatherup and Colne St Albans, delicious trout from Bybury, and much more. In the late Middle Ages, Roads and paths crossing or touching the parish were used by travellers to and from Winchcombe and the pilgrimage destination of Hales Abbey, just to the north. In 1531, a route near the centre of the parish was known as Hales Way, 
and in 1611 a man was brought up in front of the beak at the manor court for having ploughed up an old footpath to Hales. The Market Way, recorded in 1626, probably followed the route of the road from Syreford in Whittington to Winchcombe and was known in 1638 as the Port Way. In the mid-19th century, the road linked Winchcombe with the Cheltenham-London Road at Andoversford and it remains the most important south-north route through the parish today. <laughs>